and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mark and I thank you so much for coming by today. Well, another Inktober challenge has passed us by and I hope you enjoyed the challenge if you uh, participated this year. And if you survived, then congratulations. If you didn't, well, you should be proud of what you did put in. Even if it was just one drawing, one day, doesn't matter. As long as you had fun and you got to tap into your creative spirit just a little bit. However you approach the challenge, I hope you enjoyed it for whatever it was for you, even as an observer. I hope it was pleasurable for you. I think uh, I think there's so much to offer from this challenge for observers or participants or even whoever, just people who are thinking about doing it. Maybe next year is your year. For me, there were so many moments where I was ready to give up and just move on because I had so much going on this year in my personal life, just between work and family. There was just a lot going on, but I persevered and I made it through and I survived the challenge doing 31 drawings in 31 days. And I had a blast doing it. Even though some of the results didn't make me <laughs> I wasn't too thrilled with the results, but uh, there were other drawings where I was pretty pleased with. So what I want to do today is just wrap the whole Inktober challenge up for 2019 and uh, share with you some of the tools that I used and some of the drawings that I did and just go through and briefly explain some of it. And um, hopefully this is interesting for you. Uh, come on along and thank you again so much for coming by today. As for the tools that I chose to use for Inktober this year, I chose a 2H pencil, a Prismacolor Magic Rub Eraser, and of course my little companion here, my Hula Girl, <laughs> to brush away the eraser crumbs. These it could have been a 2B pencil, it could have been a gum eraser, but I chose to stick with these. I like the 2H because of the lighter lines, and the only other thing you need to start any drawing, even outside of Inktober, is pencil, eraser and paper. And for paper I, I chose this handbook travelogue journal which I absolutely love these handbook journals. I have a ton of them and I even did this little starter illustration just to kick off the book and get Inktober going. As far as dip pens go, my Red Ombre Custom Oblique Pen. I love this thing. It's one of my favorite dip pens to use. And of course the Tachikawa dip pen with uh, just some old nib that I've had for about <laughs> 20 years. Uh, I also chose a new ink this year. It's a Bombay Black India ink, which I hadn't used before. I've used other PH Martin inks, but uh, decided to use the Black Bombay this year. Alcohol for cleaning up the dip pens. And um, this little thing here is a fingernail brush used for people when they do manicures and so forth, but it's got really stiff bristles, which are great for for splattering or spattering and um, I didn't do any spattering this year for Inktober but I do love this little brush when I do choose to do spattering and of course these cotton rounds for dabbing off the pen tips or cleaning up afterwards. This is basically the essential set that I use when I'm doing my dip pen drawing. As far as other basics, Sharpie markers. I love Sharpie markers for just the quick access and the quick availability and the ease in drawing. This year I used the uh, the Magnum to do a larger area. I did the word legend and had to do a whole black background. The regular Sharpie is a great tool. And then the, sh the finer Sharpie for detail lines. When I was at work and I wanted to do a drawing as quick as I could, these were great in just accessing that. So that was a lot of fun as well. As far as disposable pens, drawing pens, and Reaper graphic pens, I chose the Copic Multiliners, which they have a, a refillable version, which is more expensive. These are the cheaper disposable ones. I chose the uh, Faber-Castell Pit Markers and the Sakura Micron pens. I love the Sakura Micron pens. They're consistent, and I know exactly what I'm going to do with them when I use them. The pits, they tend to bleed a little bit, but I do love their brush pen. It's a lot better than the Sakura Micron brush pen, which the tip splits a little bit and it's not as reliable. But the, uh, the pit brush pen, I love this thing. It's really reliable and helps get into some areas where you can't, you know, it's more than just a, a fill-in area. It's a, it's a bigger area. But all three of these lines are, are great to use and I highly recommend all three of them. These are water brush pens. They're just cheap, generic water brush pens that I got, I think, at a bookstore. And uh, I fill these with ink. I fill this one with a Liquitex Neutral Gray ink. And I've been using this for years, so it never goes bad and it never dries out. And it gives me some great textures and some great layers when I'm doing shadows and textured areas. And this Liquitex, I'm, I'm almost out of it. I've used it for a few years. Absolutely love this ink. And uh, the black one, I decided to fill with that black uh, Bombay India ink this year and try that, and it worked really well. But I will warn you, if you're using water brush pens with ink, they tend to get very messy, so just be, be aware of that. And lastly, one tool that I didn't expect to use this year was ballpoint pens. 
In fact, I just did a video recently about why no one takes ballpoint pens seriously, but I loved ballpoint pens growing up, and it was really nice to revisit them and just try some Bic pens, and I had some paper-made Inkjoy pens, and I had a lot of fun using the ballpoint pens. I also used a white jelly roll this year to do some highlights and accents, and it worked out great. So I was really happy with the decisions of just the tools that I used, and it didn't cost me a lot of money. As far as the prompt list this year, there was a lot of great words, but a lot of words I really wasn't excited about, like dragon and ghost and dark. They just seemed a little obvious. Now what I like to do when I start an Inktober challenge is I like to do an introductory drawing in the sketchbook I'm using, and that's what you see here. It's just a fun little exercise that's going in the book that I'm doing all my Inktober drawings in, stream of conscious, just for fun. The second drawing I did in that book was for the pros and cons of posting online video that I did recently, and this was a drawing for that. And that was a great way to start off in the sketchbook that I was going to use for Inktober before I got to day one, which was the word ring, which made me immediately think of coffee rings on a table, ringworm, a boxing ring, or even a ring around a tub, and I decided to incorporate several different ideas into one drawing from Mindless, which was day two, I thought about how when I've, I went to the mall recently and I realized people actually go into the restroom in a public restroom and use their cell phones, which to me was crazy. It's mindless, but that was the solution for that. For bait, I immediately thought of catching a fish and using fish bait, but then I started thinking fish bait, click bait, and you won't believe what happened next. And I was really happy with this solution. For freeze, I thought about things that I put in my freezer, like bags of fruit and berries, and I thought, well, what if I did instead of berries, what if, what if I did little heads? And doing each little head took a while to do, and it was so much fun to do. Now, build just had me thinking building a dream, and so I decided to literally build a dream and had a little construction site of little people building a dream of different materials. I loved doing this drawing. It was really fun. For husky, I immediately went to a husky dog or a big strong man, and then I thought, what about the husky exterior of corn on the cob and throwing a couple of worms in there, and uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed this, and I painted that with Derwent Inktense pencils. For Enchanted, I didn't want to do something magical. I wanted to do something romantic, and I had a great time drawing this. I'd never drawn a peacock before, and I really enjoyed this little romantic scene. For Frail, I thought about an old man, and originally I was going to have him placing a flower on a grave, but I thought it was just a little too morbid, so I decided to change it at the last minute to a house of cards. Now, by the time I got to Swing, I just was losing steam, I was rushing through it, I wasn't happy with the solution, it was pretty obvious. The drawing is fine, and it came out just, you know, I got the drawing done on time, but I just wasn't very happy with that solution. For pattern, I decided to take uh, Dick Van Patten, an actor from the 80s, and put his face in a pattern on a patent leather penny loafer. And <laughs> I was really happy with the way this came out. That's my sense of humor. Now for snow, I could have stopped at the word snow with the snowman, but I kept thinking about Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and I was really happy with how this came out. I especially like the Doc character on the right there. Now for dragon... I didn't know what to do for dragon, I didn't want to do the obvious solution, so I did a Komodo dragon dragging a dragon fruit who was being a drag. And if you look at the little uh, thought bubbles, it's saying a bunch of negative things. For Ash, I decided to do what my mom always had going on. She's a smoker, and she always had these long cigarettes with uh, long ash on it, and I used the Derwent Inktense pencils for that little burst of color. I also wanted to do a digital illustration and I wanted to do a portrait, so I figured for Overgrown I would do Diana Ross and I would have her Overgrown Afro, and I was happy with how it came out. With Legend, I knew exactly what I was going to do. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is one of my favorite stories, and actually people have asked me about this and how do they get that on a t-shirt, so I think that was a pretty successful solution. For Wild, I couldn't think of anything. I was late at night and I had to come up with something, so I thought Buffalo Wild Wings Restaurant, their, their logo is a buffalo with wings, and I just did a funny take on that. For ornament, I reflected back on legend, and I had so much fun doing the uh, headless horseman, I thought it would be kind of funny to do a headless Santa riding on a reindeer holding an ornament for his head, and I really enjoyed doing that one. That was probably one of my favorites. For Misfit, I thought about the band Misfits, and then I thought, well, geez, what about me? I'm kind of a misfit. So I decided to do a self-portrait in a blockhead version, and you can even see the stitches from my brain surgery up on the top of my head there. 
Now for sling, I had done the arm in a sling, but I thought it was a little too kind of gross. I wanted to do something a little stronger, so I decided to do a mother and child in a sling, and I did it in stipple version, which I really enjoyed doing the stipple. Uh, for tread, I'm just going to skip right past this. I was not happy with the solution. The drawing is fine, no complaints about that. I just wasn't really happy with the solution I came up with. I rushed it, and I could have done something better. For treasure, I thought about a treasure chest, a treasure map, and then I thought about a little treasure of chicken nuggets, and then I thought, what if I put a toe in there and that's the treasure? And, uh, that, uh, <laughs> that's kind of gross, yes, I understand. Now for ghost, this drawing was very popular online because my solution was 13 ghost peppers based on the movie 13 Ghosts. And these are the 13 ghosts in ghost pepper version, and I was really happy and had a lot of fun with that. Ancient, I had a lot of fun with this as well. Uh, it's ancient artifacts under a table, like chewing gum and who knows what. Uh, I immediately thought of a vase or something, you know, Egyptian, but I wanted to go for something a little different. For Dizzy, I thought about um, that headless theme again, but this time I was thinking concussions, and I was thinking being dizzy, and I thought, what if I had a football player carrying his own head? <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. For Tasty, a lot of people did not understand this, and I don't blame them. It's a weird drawing of little creatures eating themselves. A lot of people thought it looked like intestines. I had a blast drawing it, but it was a little weird, I admit it. <laughs> For Dark, well, Dark didn't inspire me, and I didn't have much time to work on it, so I did my favorite uh, beverage, which is uh, a Guinness beer, which is a dark beer. And that was simple, got through the challenge on that day, and was very happy with it. Like I said, this is coat. I originally did the word coat coated in paint, but then I said, you know, I want to do a tongue, a coated tongue, and I, that's what I decided to do here. And that I did uh, for the video that I mentioned before in ballpoint pen. For ride, I decided to do a, a piggyback ride, and if you notice, they each have a tattoo of a, a playing card on them for the game Let It Ride, which is a poker game. The word was injured, and I decided to do injured pride. And each letter is injured in a different way. You can see the little hand poking the eye. And um, I was really had fun with this one. It was a fun solution. For catch, I thought about J.D. Solinger's Catcher in the Rye, and this is the Holden Caulfield character with the red hat catching one of the children running off the cliff. So I wanted to go in a literature sense, and I was really pleased with that one as well. For the final drawing, which was ripe, you can see there's some ripe bananas in there, but I also included all 31 prompts in the final drawing. And this was a challenge, but it was a really fun challenge. So you can see Draco the dragon up there, the constellation, all the 31 prompts are in there, including the word ripe, and I just had a really good time drawing this one. I felt the relief of the challenge being over, and it was just fun to do because I felt no pressure. For me, I feel like this was a successful challenge because I created a body of work that I was proud of. I may not have liked all my solutions, but I was proud of the continuity and uh, the cohesiveness of each piece looking like it was all coming from the same artist, that my style got to shine through in each piece. And I was proud to be able to share my work online confidently and successfully and participate in a community and uh, share my thoughts with other people on their work and accept feedback on my own work. I would love to hear your thoughts on the challenge and how you participated, whether you didn't participate at all, did only a few drawings, or whether you succeeded at the challenge yourself and how you feel about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was enjoyable. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I'd love to bring you more content. There's lots of stuff coming this way uh, now that the challenge is over. And uh, again, thank you so much for your time. I hope you had a successful Inktober or even just a creative journey in October all on your own. Any way you did it sounds good to me. Thank you so much and God bless.